This is Mishmash TV Tuesday, you're with Ken, and my very last week we're going to be revisiting some very cool memories. Now, on Thursday's show we're going to be rewinding uh, back to some bloopers that didn't quite make it on TV. They're on YouTube though, and we're going to be playing them this week, it's going to be funny. So, there's ones there, um, I think, of me eating sheep poo, well, pretending to. Uh, there's also ones of us blowing up a baked bean can, you have got to see this one, and uh, there's some other goodies in there as well. We'll be uh, replaying some of the cool clips as well that have been real popular online. And uh, yeah, you'll get to see them for the very first time maybe, which will be interesting. And I was just thinking, I started four and a half years ago here at Mishmash. So there'll be some people now that are teenagers. There'll be some uh, babies that are now four and a half. And uh, special hello to you guys, because we get quite a few under fives watching. Uh, now... Right now, I'm going to reminisce um, on the days with uh, good old Bailey Bettis. Now, Bailey Bettis, who likes to eat lettuce, is uh, with us today. And uh, Well, she's not with us today, but we're going to be replaying clips of uh, some of the funnier moments we've had. And I remember one time when we went to Firth Tower and had a bit of a uh, old school day, back in the day. <laughs> Welcome to Mishmash. This week is going to be a lot of fun, isn't it, Ken? That's right. I'm really looking forward to it, Bailey. Pioneer Week is what we're doing, and we are going to go back in time and see what it was like to live back in the olden days. Yes, we are. Let's do it. Well, welcome to the 19th century, all right? It is the 1800s, and my name is Wayland. Yes, and my name is Elspeth. And we're way back in the day when the pioneers came to New Zealand and they started up all sorts of things like schools and churches and all different mechanical things. It's really, really interesting. So we're going to show you what it's like to live in our day. That's right, Pioneer Week. And we're going to show you around and tell you what life was like around our era. Well, we're going to go and take a look around home and see what life was really like for us. All right, let's go check it out. Let's go.
Yes. All right. We'll see you at church on Sunday, all right? See you. I want to get out. <laughs> Father said that I deserve to be here, but I want to go out. There's a scary man in here. <laughs> Father, can I come out now? All right, my boy, we'll let you out, but I don't ever want to see you in here again. Okay, Father, I promise I'll be a good little boy. You make sure you are, my boy. Come on. Thank you. You make me glad with glee. Wayland has been let out now, so he had a, a bit of a potty mouth, but he's learned his lesson. And Wayland, come on down. There we go. Thank you, Father, for letting him out. No, I don't think Wayland will be back in there again. It's no, I think he's Wayland. learned his lesson. I've learned my lesson, Father. I would never want to go there again. And is it true that people got sent to jail for using bad language? Oh, my word, they certainly did, my boy. Wow. Because things were pretty tough back in those days. So what was the punishment? Like, was there a fine? Was there, there was you know... a fine. You were sent to prison for a couple of nights and then you were charged 10 pounds. <gasps> Which would be about five hundred dollars these days. Whoa! That, for using bad language. So there you go. Money. That is a lot of money. I don't think I can afford that. No, I don't think you can, Wayland. Your lucky father let you out. Father bailed you out because he loves you. So you're lucky. But yes, bad language. So there you go. Don't use bad language. Now the prison would have been used to you know, have all sorts of other uh, criminals, I guess. But things that you probably don't even think that is crimes. Like what other sort of little little crimes they would have been put away for? That things maybe I guess we get away with these days. Like... Well, you might steal something, or you might steal somebody's fruit from their orchard. Oh. What about picking a flower like I did just before? No, I think we'd let that go because it was a beautiful rose and you had very good intentions. Oh, um, that is right. I do like a lucky. girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> there we go. We've had such a great day, haven't we? And I love learning about all the history all this week, Pioneer Week. Mm. It's been so great, hasn't it, Elspeth? It has. It's been fantastic. We've learned so much of New Zealand history. So if you want to learn more, make sure you come to Firth Tower in Matamata. It is so much fun. You can learn all about about how they used to live, schooling, and you yes. can even have a look in jail, and there's a little surprise in jail too. And if you want to know what it is, you'll have to come and check it out. Definitely. Well, I reckon we should head back to 2009, and here we go. All right, bye guys. This week's giveaway, proudly brought to you by Bay City Cinemas, Event Cinemas in Hamilton, and Reading Cinemas Rotorua. You could win a family pass to one of these. We've got three to give away. If you'd like to enter, get online, mishmashtv.co.nz. Text 0274 prizes or write in P.O. Box 411 in Matamata. All this week we are reliving the past and, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of some older person, maybe grandma. Back in my day it used to be a whole lot better. Um, but we're all about uh, moving forward and on and just uh, honouring the the past to move on with the future. Now Brittany Stewart who is from Tauranga who has been studying at Auckland AUT will be taking over from me um, from next week onwards so she has she is such an awesome person and she's going to hopefully take Mishmash to the next level which uh, I'm all about and hopefully it grows and grows and grows as well. So um, since I've started we've got a Facebook page yep that's pretty cool for mums and dads to connect with uh, facebook.com forward slash mishmash tv um, we've kind of expanded the brand a little bit so it's not just a kids show but we want to be um, more uh, out there and uh, get in front of the people so not just on regional tv like tv central and tv road Raw, but doing events like uh, the christmas ones the easter and um, one of my initiatives that i started up when i first started was the talent quest which is still going has your school got talent and uh, it's one of um, my proud legacies that will be living on and it will be coming up in term three holidays so make sure uh, if your school's taking part you give it your all you give it your best and all the best for everyone taking part and I know if from a, a viewing point of view Talent quests are so interesting, right? There's New Zealand's Got Talent on TV1 at the moment. Uh, we all love Idol or the, the new one, The Voice or X Factor. Um, but make sure you do vote for the People's Choice Award because there are some amazing, talented people out there. And who knows, maybe you might be watching the next 
uh, Brooke Fraser or uh, Lady Gaga. Who knows? These guys could be the next Kimbra. Mm, she's doing very well at the moment. She's from Hamilton. So it could be you taking to the stage worldwide. The world's your oyster and the world's uh, not so big when you really put your mind to it and uh, live your dreams. Well, we're going to be reliving some of the past right now. Here's another back in the day clip. If you're happy and you know it, clap your feet. If you're happy and you know it, clap your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your feet. <laughs> Woo. Welcome along good. to Mishmash. It is Friday and we're at Tarapa Waterworld here in Hamilton. We've got some exciting action today. Oh, we so do. And we're in our little flippity floppities here, getting ready to hop in the outside <laughs> pool, the Lido pool here at Waterworld. We had so much fun this week. We have learned water safety, lifeguard tips, the spinal roll, which yeah, that, maybe you'll get later on. Maybe. <laughs> don't don't rely on me to be a lifeguard and save you um, if you're swimming out in the ocean. All right, we have got some challenges today, and I love challenges because you never know who's going to win. Now the first game is we've got a bucket here. Oh. Yep. Well, I'll get have my to take, paddles I, out. I'll have you to take, take these, those off. Take these off. All right, and I'll show them this. Right, you've got a bucket, and this has got little seals in. You want to grab one out? Yep. And these sink in the pool. So what we're going to do is chuck these out into the pool. There are 11 little blue seals. There we go. You chuck the rest out. Okay. And then Ken and I have to go and get them, and we each have a bucket. So we've got, he's got a blue bucket, I've got the white bucket. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whoever gets the most wins. You're on me, you're on so my we've got, Oh sorry. You're on my foot. We've okay. got a whole lot of challenges to do today. And Kitzbiz News is coming up very shortly. So how about we get on to this challenge, Ken? Yep, absolutely. Let's get in the water. my goggles on at the start so, so I, just, did I. <laughs> I chucked them all under the water. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six all baby right, seals. I've got one, two, three, four. There was 11, right? Five! five. I won! Ken wins! Yeah! Well done, Ken! Man. Excellent stuff. Good sportsmanship there, Bailey. <laughs> We've got another two challenges coming up. We've got Kids Bridge News with the bloopers as well from this week. It's probably quite a few, but we'll catch you up real soon, okay? Don't go anywhere! One of the cool times we had here at Mishmash TV was with Taco, our dog, okay? Now, we've always had Dougal, he's uh, part of the furniture, but it was so cool having an actual little uh, chihuahua-looking thing. It was... Um, he was cute. He's uh, still alive, for those of you that do remember Taco. He's a little bit bigger than usual, um, but uh, I haven't got any photos to show you, and I haven't seen him of recent, to be honest. Uh, but we did a Taco love test, and that was between myself and Bailey. Funnily enough, um, I didn't really have a bit of any chance, really, because uh, Taco was Bailey's dog, so of course she feeds him. Of course he's going to go to her. Come on, I jump on your woo woo. I jump on your woo woo. Come on, I jump on your woo woo. I jump on your woo woo. Come on, I jump on your woo woo. I jump on your woo woo. You are my neighbor. I am a boy. He's my good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Taco. Come on, you can do it! You can do it! <laughs>
did it again with some kids that kind of looked like us. Letitia and Samuel Eddy from Hamilton. They did the taco love test. Check it out. Come on, taco. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Chris from the Funky Monkeys and Dougal Dog had a little bit of a competition as well. I think Taco was a little bit scared though of Dougal. As he ended up going and doing wee wees on the park there. Good times. That was the taco love test. One of the awesome memories that uh, me and Bailey have. And you can find some of those uh, videos on YouTube. So make sure you check them out and share them with your friends. Well, coming up on Thursday's show, we're going to be replaying some of the ones that didn't make it to air. And uh, right now, though, we're going to be checking out another Bailey mishmash memory. Oh, oh man, I'm puffed already. I know. Skin. Man, it's, intense. it's so cool. Welcome along. If you've just tuned in, it is Man vs. Wild Week, and wow. it is so exciting. We're at Wairiri Falls. Not yet, though. We're actually on a journey there. We are on a journey. Now, you can come and do this trek, and it only takes normally a day to do it, <laughs> but what we're going to do is take our time heading up and back because we want to stop, show you the sights, and so you can learn survival skill tips, and we can chat to our guests, find out what they do, find out who they are, and find out how to survive Absolutely. in the wild. Now, I do believe that we have Zach coming in now and also I hear, Scott. I can, I can hear I can crunching. Hear cr crunching of like sticks. It actually could be a deer or something. Oh. Well, you got to be quiet if it's a deer, it might just run off. Oh, oh, oh. what was that? Whoa, oh, you the hey, boys man. are. Look at you. Here's okay. So, Scott and Zach, all right, and uh, you guys are from the Morrinsville Air Training Corps. Is that right? Yes. What what, what one's that? Is that? Uh, 31 Squadron. Oh, Squadron. I love it. And we're going <laughs> to give you more details on that Wednesday, chatting to the boys. Now, do you like our gears? Are we all ready to go up the top, you reckon? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any tips, kind of, before we go any further? Uh, don't wear cotton, it, it kills you. Cotton? cotton kills you? Are you serious? So I've got jeans on underneath, is this not good? Uh, nah, because what it does is when it gets wet, it, when it dries, it takes your body warmth away. Wow. And can slowly kill you with hypothermia. Wow. Oh, Sounds so a little bit serious. intense. Okay. Maybe you should get changed, Kim, when okay. we find a, a spot for you. You can run off into the bush okay. and get changed. Don't look, though, because I don't I want you to see I me in my boxes. It's embarrassing. I'm going to go and get changed, and we're going to be back soon as we continue our walk into the bush. I'm loving it. We're, we're on track. We're, we're on, there's a track here, so that's good. We aren't going off, off road yet, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun, and I hear that there's going to be um, a bit of a water crossing today as well. I know. Ooh. We're going to get really into it, and you know, I'm walking in the 
this bush. It's so cool. The air is crisp. It's a beautiful day. Oh, it I'm is. really excited to do this, Ken. It is, and we're all warmed up. But I reckon once we get wa- walking, we're going to be even extra I'm warm. Take off the jumpers, I think. And just in case we get lost, because the boys reminded us earlier, you know, um, we could actually get lost this week. So, because I was just expecting us to make it to the top and back, but just in case, you know, we've turned off our cell phones. And what else have you guys done to prepare just in case? What have you do- got done anything? Exciting. I uh, looked up on the maps. Oh, Ooh, clever. It. Great stuff. We'll be back in just a tick. We're going to carry on walking. Let's go, guys. Let's Woo!
We are on a journey up to Wairere Falls all this week and now when you go on to the bush what do you pack because you've got to take stuff with you, you can't just go out and expect to be fine and dandy because anything could happen in the bush. So we've got our two boys here that are going to tell us about it. Scott, you know, you've, you're an expert in the whole packing business, what do you kind of have to do, like how do you pack your bag, Like, because there's a bit of an art to it isn't there? Yeah. Um... So what you want to do is you want to put your sleeping bag at the bottom because that's your most important asset when you're in the bush. Keeps you warm if you get wet or anything like that. And oh, well, for starters you need to put um, a pack liner down. So that's a big orange bag which also doubles as a survival bag which will keep you nice and dry and warm. And then you put uh, your spare change of clothes and everything into a plastic bag and you put that in next. And then you want to put things like your towels and all your clothes at the bottom because they're light. And then you want to put your food and your gas cooker and your first aid kit and everything heavy at the top. So it pushes the weight against your shoulders so you don't get tired carrying your pack. Oh, that's very clever. And I noticed down here, Ken, pick that up. This is Scott's water. He's very clever. This is great. Now you just pop this in your pack, do you? Oh, yeah, I just sit over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like one of those runners. There we go, look. Look at that. So he puts his water in there and then he can put this to his mouth and just drink, drink, drink. And if you run out of water, you know, you've got natural resources here, which is usually fine. I know some streams you can't drink out of because they're like chemicals from back in the day from mining. But this bush here at Wairere Falls, the water's fine. As you can see, it looks nothing wrong Absolutely. And you know, another really good idea is if you're tramping sort of like overnight or throughout the week and you're camping near some water, especially in summer, because your mm. water bottle can get quite warm if you don't have one of these clever things, what you can do is tie a rope to your water bottle, make good. sure it's really, really secure, and then leave your water bottle in the stream, the cold stream, and then tie the other end to a tree or something. That is so cool. And then overnight, the water will be nice and cold, ready for you the next day. Onto it. And you can even leave the lid on, and you might catch a few fish and to <laughs> eat, maybe. <laughs> All right, Wairere Falls, here we come. We're going to continue the journey. Here we go. Let's go, stay safe. It's funny how with girls, when they get married, they usually give their last name away and take on their husband's last name. Now, a couple of the presenters, well, actually three of them, so there's Bailey, Chloe, and Amy, okay? And Bailey got uh, married to Richard, whose last name was Bettis, so she was Bailey Bettis, BB. Uh, there was Chloe Anderson, who's now Chloe Chivers, CC. There's Ken Knight, KK, funny, eh? Um, Amy Pollard is now Amy Forrest. Something in the water here at Mishmash, and um, well, Bailey's had a baby as well, baby Olivia. That's the reason why she ended up leaving. And um, I remember the day actually she told me, and I was gutted because I was like, no, my best friend's gonna be leaving me. Well, my best on air friend anyway. And uh, well, it was a bit of a sad day actually. It took a couple of weeks to sink in, but. Um, Ollie, her baby, is so cute, and uh, hopefully you get to meet her one day. You just might, because Bailey will be taking over the producing role for a little bit here at Mishmash, and so you might see her name on the credits, Bailey Bettis. Eh, look out for that one. All right, well, we reminisce tomorrow, and uh, Chloe is going to be hopefully coming in as a special guest tomorrow, so we'll be able to reminisce together. Uh, Thursday, those cool as... Um, 
videos that didn't make it on TV. And on Friday, we remember about you, uh, all the schools that we've been to, and what it's all about, Mishmash TV, the children, just for fun. We'll catch you guys tomorrow, 7.30, 9.30, and 4 o'clock. Have yourselves a great rest of your Tuesday. This has been an Alpha Media Production, a division of Television Media Group.